For people driving by, the Pacific Agri Research Center in Summerland is probably best known for being the big building on top of the hill. But while the building is big, it's what's going on inside the facility which is truly colossal. Our clients are really the growers in the area. They're very, very important. We work very closely with them and addressing questions that they have uh, problems with. So if they have, well, developing new cultivars is a really important one. So things that are adapted to this area. Things like our cherry program, uh, cultivars are sold around the world and probably well over 75% of the cultivars that are currently sold are from our program. One of the research experiments currently being conducted at the facility looks at improving water efficiency to vineyards by reducing the frequency of watering while still maintaining highly productive and good quality grapevines. The implications of this research are quite broad, um, both on a regional scale because the vineyards cover such a large area of the Okanagan Valley now that um, if we can reduce the amount of water that is used by those vineyards that water then becomes available for other uses. Another interesting project underway is an experimental site that looks at different rootstocks of Skeena cherries. The goal is to help producers grow more cherries with less production costs. The aim of this trial is to find an optimum training system which will maintain low um, tree growth and high productivity. So it's a way of improving productivity for cherry orchardists. The apple breeding program is another important research project which looks at producing high quality eating apples. Probably the most famous one uh, would be the Spartan apple, but people might also be familiar with uh, Sunrise which is this one here. It's a uh, very excellent quality early apple and also silken, which again is, is a later apple than Sunrise, but it's uh, a very outstanding, uh, fairly early apple as well. The reason that we have these varieties here as well as some of these other varieties from around the world is we use these in our breeding program uh, to bring some of those traits into the qualities that we're breeding. And one of the qualities research scientists are looking at in apples is firmness. They want to be able to sort and deliver high quality apples without destroying them in the process. This number here is what we call an IQ number. This machine is called an IQ. And uh, essentially uh, that IQ number will tell you what the relative firmness of that apple is. We, we measure other firmness uh, measures that are classically used for apples and we calibrate it against this. Something like a 29 here would be a reasonable, good quality uh, firmness for eating. If you go down to values somewhere around 20, then you start getting into a soft and, and maybe a mealy apple. Or on the other end, if you go up to about 40 or 45 on this scale, you're looking at an apple that becomes very difficult for people to eat because it's too hard. Another device currently being tested aims to get the sugar content and quality of apples in a non-destructive way. You have to press this right against the apple. It's shining light, and then it's measuring light coming off the apple, and then it's calculating sugar content. So what does that number tell us about that particular apple? This apple has 15% sugar in it, which is a fairly good level of sugar for a good tasting apple. Another important research program looks at pest management. The entomology department looks at what problems growers are having and what can be done to help them, usually through non-chemical approaches. There are two species of leafhopper that attack uh, grapevines and they feed on the leaves uh, causing this stippling and when it's really severe the, you'll end up the leaves will go entirely brown which uh, reduces the photosynthetic uh, abilities of the plant and it delays ripening. It also removes the starches and sugars required for overwintering so you can stress the plant severely. The ultimate goal is to improve the financial situation for growers. But we do have a uh, public uh, mandate as well to help preserve the environment. So we have several mandates. So, so the approach, the non-chemical approach, the use of alternative non-chemical programs, so that adds to the sustainability of the, the environment, but also, which is of, obviously of importance to the general public. We are part of the community, we're an important part of the community, and so to have our local community understand what we contribute and what is what's done in that castle on the hill, because I think sometimes when people drive by, that's what they think. Um, 
and um, really to engage people in what research is all about. In Summerland for Shaw TV, I'm Marianne Ockel.